Pam, I have to ask you, because my new book is set in New Orleans and your new book is set in New Orleans. Why did you choose to set your book here? I love this city. I really love New Orleans. And I set the book in 1974 because that was a time that, that was so pure to me. It was, New Orleans was like a small town at, at that time. And um, you, could, you could ride your bicycle at night. You could go anywhere at night. You could, you know, it was really a beautiful place. But also, it's fun to set a story in a time that readers aren't familiar with. And so if someone comes to New Orleans today, it's almost like we were talking about with art and the Impressionism. If somebody comes to New Orleans today, they will go down to the French Quarter and they'll see a certain picture. They'll see the Jacks Brewery, which is now a shopping area and condominiums. But in those days, the Jacks Brewery had just been closed. And it was all a dark area. And the tourist, uh, the tourist um, places that are across from the Jacks Brewery used to be um, sort of sort of very eclectic little bars and cafes and restaurants. So it's fun to show the reader the same city that exists right now, but 35 years before that, and show them what the difference is. It's almost like the layers of a painting and the layer and the, and the layers of history. That's, that's why I chose that time and the place. The other thing about writing New Orleans, I don't know if you found this or not, Erica, but I found that so much has been written about the city that you have to be, you're always warned, don't get caught in the cliches. Stay away from the cliches. The problem that I have is I love the cliches. <laughs> That's what I love about New Orleans. I love Jackson Square. I love, you know, I love sitting in outdoor cafes. I love um, Frankie and Johnny's for food. I love, I just love the cliches. So I decided I'm just going to write about New Orleans the way I love it. And if there are cliches in there, I'll try to make people understand why they became cliches in the first mm -hmm. place. They became that in the first place because they're so wonderful. I, I think that's smart. I mean, it, and it is what you love about the city. Mm -hmm. And I think when an author really, you know, has a passion for something, mm -hmm. the passion comes through in the writing, and that's what engages yeah. the reader. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fascinated by that idea of showing the city back in the 70s, too. I think yeah. that's a brilliant idea, and it does add a lot of layering, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. of interest. and, and the, it's fascinating. It's like it, the city's changed since Katrina. Yes. But, so you have that change too, but you have the change that time has wrought. Exactly. Do you remember when, when Jackson Square was not blocked off to traffic? And it was just the, the streets all around the square were busy with cars. And, um, there, and so all of the artists were sort of crammed up against the, the fence. Mm -hmm. That's why they became known as fence artists, I guess. And there really weren't fortune tellers a lot. There, you know, there wasn't all this, all the razzle dazzle that we have today. It was more like Montmartre used to be in Paris. You know, it was a, a place of art and music, as opposed to all the commotion that goes on in Jackson Square today. Okay, so I came to the city after that because it, the, oh, okay. it, since I've been here, it's been as it is with mm -hmm. it blocked off to mm -hmm. traffic. So that's really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me want to experience it. <laughs>